Hey, it's Dr. Scott Watson with a video to try to explain the tricky topic of transposition and specifically transposing instruments. So what do we mean by transposition? Well, let's say we have a melody like the familiar tune Yankee Doodle and it's going to be in this key. This is the key of A, which is three sharps. So we would sing it like Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. That seems a little high for my voice. It strains me a little bit. So I might transpose that tune down to the key of, let's say, F. And now it's a little bit lower. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. So you recognize it as the same tune. That's because the interval structure, all the, all the notes in the melody, we just map them down um, what, what it turns out is the interval of a major third from A major down to F major. So we would say we transpose that melody. Well, it turns out that instruments sometimes are in um, concert pitch or, or the key of C. They're in, in the true um, tones that you hear, like flute is a concert pitch instrument. When we play an F, it actually sounds like an F, right? Sounds like the same note. And if I played Yankee Doodle in the key of F on the flute, it does sound like the... Right, it sounds like the same notes I was playing on the piano. Um, I have a, a trumpet here that is also in the key of C. It's a, it's a non-transposing or a concert pitch trumpet. It's a, it's a C trumpet, right? So it's just like the flute. It plays an F, it sounds like an F. But I also have a trumpet that's a B-flat trumpet, which is a little bit larger. Let's look at them, right? So the C trumpet is the one on the bottom, and it's if I line them up, the C trumpet is actually a little bit shorter then the trumpet on the top, the B-flat trumpet, is a little bit longer. How much longer? Well, it's long enough that it sounds a step lower. So instead of this being a C trumpet, it's a step lower. It's a B-flat trumpet. So if I play an F, the same fingering that I played on the C trumpet a moment ago, it's not going to sound like an F. So this, even though I played it using the notes F, right, what I see on the page was still F, F, G, A, F, A, G, F, F, G, A, F, E, right? So I was doing the fingerings for what trumpet players know as F, F, G, A, and so forth, right? But what it sounded like was E flat. Like I was playing the melody in the key of E flat with the notes mapped down a step. So this trumpet sounds a step lower than concert pitch, than, than truly what you hear. So here's the big overarching lesson for transposing instruments. Most transposing instruments sound lower than the notes look on the page. If you see a note on the page, like F, and you play the F on a transposing instrument, it's going to sound lower by what I call the interval of transposition. So a C trumpet in the key of C, right, is concert pitch, it's true, it's actually what, what um, the notes are. A B flat trumpet, which is a larger trumpet, is B flat is a step lower than C. So its interval of transposition is a major second, or it's a whole step down. So the interval of transposition for the B flat trumpet is a whole step lower than what it looks like on the page. That's the big lesson is sight is going to be higher than sound or sound is going to be lower than the sight. And that's what we have to keep track of. So when I play the, the flute, it's exactly like it looks on the page, right? But when I play the B-flat trumpet or this instrument, the B-flat clarinet, it's not going to sound like the actual notes. It's going to sound a whole step lower because B-flat is a whole step lower than C. So that F that I played on the clarinet really sounded like an E-flat. It sounded a step lower. Sight is higher than sound or sound is lower than sight. And that's what we're going to find out is true with all of the transposing instruments that we're going to look at in this video. All right, let's, let's use these illustrations hopefully to tell the story of transposing instruments. So here we have a trumpet in C. The notes that come out of the trumpet in C are actual pitch. So for instance, if this trumpet sees on the staff, so we're going to put an eyeball here, if it sees on the staff, this note here, F, then what actually sounds, that's supposed to be an ear, <laughs> what actually sounds is the same note, the note F. That's for trumpet in C. Now I'm going to draw another trumpet that's just a little bit longer. And the note that comes out of this trumpet when it sees 
on the staff and F is going to be lower because it's a bigger instrument, right? The larger the, look at it's, it's, it's bigger by just a little bit, right? It's a little bit longer of an instrument, so it's going to be lower. How much lower? Well, that's the interval of transposition, right? This is a trumpet in C. This is a trumpet in B flat. And B flat is a whole step lower, or sometimes we call that a major second lower. So the interval of transposition is a major second. That's how much lower it's going to sound. Well, what's a major second lower than F? Well, that's an E flat. So the note E flat is actually the note that sounds, right? That comes out of the trumpet, right? The trumpet player holding this B flat trumpet sees on the paper an F, but when that trumpet player plays the F, the same way it would have played the F on the C trumpet, it presses the same valve and plays the F, well, an E flat actually comes out. So what sounds is not true, it's actually lower. So the, the, the rule here is that sight is higher than sound when it comes to these transposing instruments, or the other way around is that sound is going to be lower than sight by the interval of transposition. And with a B flat trumpet, the interval of transposition is a major second. By the way, the same thing is true with our um, clarinet in B flat. Um, here's a clarinet in C, which really doesn't exist. They don't really make these instruments anymore. But let's just say that there was a clarinet in C and a note came out of it. Let's say it was the same written F on the staff, right? This first space is F. So the note that that clarinet player sees uh, is F. But what sounds out of the clarinet, that what, what we hear when that clarinet player plays that F, is an F. So this is for a clarinet in C. Now, I'm going to make a clarinet that is just a little bit longer. I'm going to make it right over here so you can see that it's significantly longer. Well, it's a, it's a little bit longer, right? So this is you know about that, that much longer, right? So it's, it's longer by a whole step. It's going to be, this is going to be a clarinet in B flat, right? So the interval of transposition is going to be a major second, just like it was for the B flat trumpet. So it's a larger clarinet, it's going to sound lower. So the note that comes out of this, when it sees an F, right? When it sees an F is actually going to be lower by a major second. It's going to be an E flat because it's the same interval of transposition as the B flat trumpet. So these are two instruments that are transposing instruments that sound a whole step lower than they look when they when the player sees it on the page. All right, let's try another transposing instrument. For instance, there's a French horn. Now we're going to draw a hypothetical French horn that's in the key of C. So this French horn is a horn in C or concert pitch. What it plays when it sees a note on the staff, I'm going to put the note as a C. Okay, what it plays when it sees that C, it's actually a C. So this instrument is non-transposing. It's concert pitch. It's true. What it sees on the page is exactly what it sounds like. Now I'm going to draw a much bigger French horn. This one is so much bigger that it sounds a fifth lower, a perfect fifth lower. This is a horn in the key of F, or a horn in F. It's significantly bigger, right? So we got a lot larger. Maybe I should have even made it larger. But the point is that what comes out of it is going to sound, um, the interval of transposition is a perfect fifth lower, right? So here's the same written C, but this is what it sounds like when it comes out of this much larger horn in F. It sounds like an F, right? It sounds a perfect fifth lower. The interval of transposition was a perfect fifth. What it sees is the same written note on the staff as the C horn, but this F horn, when it plays the same fingering, the same C, it comes out a perfect fifth lower. Sounds like an F. We're seeing that with all these transposing instruments, the interval of transposition um, takes the, makes the instrument sound lower. Sight is higher than sound, right? Here, sight, what it saw on the page, is higher than the sound, or sound is lower 
than what it looked like on the page. And I just want to do one more transposing instrument. Let's pretend there's a saxophone in the key of C. So this is not an alto sax, it's actually what would be like a soprano sax, but I'll just put sax in C. So it's a, put some keys on it here. <laughs> All right, so here's a saxophone that when it sees, let's pretend it's playing um, the note D, okay? It's a, it's a saxophone in C, so it's non-transposing. It sounds the same as it looks. So what it sees is that D on the staff, and what comes out of the instrument when it plays a D on the staff is a D, right? So sound is the same as sight. But let's draw a much bigger saxophone. And this one, put some keys on it here. <laughs> and this saxophone is the E flat alto sax. So sax in E flat, sometimes called an alto saxophone. So it's gonna look at that same D on the staff, but check this out. The interval of transposition is a major six because E flat is a major six lower than C. So instead of an, a D coming out of the saxophone, when it fingers a D, like just like the C saxophone fingered the D and played a D, it fingers the D but a, an F comes out, which is a major six lower. So the interval of transposition, major six, sound is lower than sight, right? Here's what it looks at on the page, and here's what it sounds like when it's played. Of course, the other side of the equation when it comes to transposing instruments, say I'm a composer or arranger and I wanna write a melody and then have it being played by different instruments in different transpositions, I have to understand that interval of transposition and compensate by taking it higher. So for instance, here is a melody that I've written out in the key of D for flute, voice, piano, any non-transposing instrument. These are concert pitch uh, instruments and they all are gonna sound exactly like they look. So here's the melody. Notice that this melody does have an accidental. This C natural near the end is canceling out the C sharp that's in the key signature. I've written in the key of D, which is two sharps, and notice it starts on D, right, the, the, uh, the first scale degree. Now, to write that for B flat trumpet or B flat clarinet, remember the interval of transposition for the B flat clarinet or trumpet, it's a major second. It's going to sound lower. Sound is lower than sight. So if I want the clarinet and the trumpet to actually sound like the flute, I've got to compensate the fact that it sounds a step lower, but I want it to sound the same as the flute, I've got to write it a step higher. So I have to take that interval of transposition, go the opposite direction. That's what I've done with my key signature. The original was in the key of D. My B-flat trumpet and B-flat clarinets are now in the key of E, which is a major second higher. When I copy the notes of my um, flute part, to the trumpet and the clarinet, notice that it's a step higher. Uh, Finale, the software I'm using, does that for me automatically. But now it's starting on a step higher. E is where the melody needs to be written for the trumpet and clarinet so that when it sounds a step lower, it'll actually sound like the D. So we should hear this sound exactly the same now. Right, they're all sounding the same, even though we've written the trumpet and the clarinet a step higher. And notice the accidental uh, that corresponds to the C natural. Now it's a D natural, a step higher. So the idea that when you have an interval of transposition and sight is higher than sound, so you want it to sound right, you have to take it a step higher when you write it out for that instrument so that it will sound true. Let's look at the alto sax, which the interval of transposition is a major six. It's going to sound a major six lower, so we're going to write it a major six higher so that it actually sounds the same. The key signature of D was the original. This five sharps, that's the key signature of B major. That's a major six higher. And notice that the original notes were D, D, A. And notice the alto sax starts B, B, F sharp, which is a major six higher. So it is going to sound the same. Notice at the end, there's an accidental that corresponds to that original C natural, only here it's A natural. It's a major six higher. So this should all sound in unison or all sound the same. And it does, right? And then one more transposition. Let's do the French horn, horn in F. The interval of transposition is a perfect fifth. It's going to sound a perfect fifth lower than what it sees. So we write it a perfect fifth higher so that it actually sounds true. The key signature of D was the original, and a perfect fifth higher than that is A major, and that's three sharps. And notice that the two first notes are now A instead of D. So they're going to be written a perfect fifth higher, so it all sounds together. So what you're looking at on this uh, score here is what the melody Old Joe Clark would look like 
for different instruments so that it would sound exactly the same. Here they are all playing together, but written out differently. I want to show you one more thing too, um, that if I turn the transposition off, I can do that in Finale. Uh, in the document menu, we can say um, display in concert pitch. In other words, display all of these in the notes that they actually truly sound like. Watch what happens. Now they're all in the key of D, and now they're all exactly the same notes. Of course, a B-flat trumpet can't play those notes. It's now going to sound a step lower. It would sound wrong. And the, and the E-flat alto sax can't play the, the low D, it would sound actually um, a major six lower, it would sound wrong. So for these instruments, these transposing instruments to sound correctly, we need to write them higher by the interval of transposition. And that's what the software does for us. Uh, Finale does that when it puts it in the key uh, that works for the instrument. Mm -hmm.